the construction set. Tom Thomas. Huh? Why are you sitting in the dark? Because it looks better this way. Check it out. Oh, look at that. What a beautiful castle this is. It's like out of a fairy tale. No, it's from my construction set. I put it together myself. Class. Oh, let's be knights. I love that game. And so does the old dragon. Who locked the fair princess inside of the castle? I get to be the princess. Oh, where's the brave knight who will rescue me from the evil dragon? Hang on, I'll save you, Simka. No, look, you really don't look like a knight. You don't even have armor. Armor. Wait, hang on a second. A construction set lets you build lots of different things from a set of parts. Put them together like this, you've got a house. Like this, a car. Or like this, a spaceship. The parts might be made of metal and connected with screws. Some construction sets have plastic parts you click together. Other sets are models where the pieces are glued together. You can also find magnetic sets. Touch the parts together and magnetic attraction makes them stick. Beware, dragon! Already. And where's the castle? The planet has been attacked by robots! And they have destroyed the castle! Oh, and they've kidnapped me! And are you still a princess? Of course I'm still a princess! Oh, save me, brave knight! Right! <laughs> What's going on? This is a magnetic construction set, and your armor is made out of metal, so you got attracted to the magnets. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, rescue me! Help me! You gotta save me! Hang in there! I'll be right back! I gotta change my Don't even think about running away. And so it goes. Everyone's abandoned the poor princess. Oh. Simka's my older sister. That's why she thinks it's okay to get bossy with me. But I don't let it get to me because she's very smart and a quick thinker. She knows gadgets better than just about anybody. It's always interesting with Simka. And she's really smart, too. She gets nothing but A's at school. Everyone in our class loves her. Only she and Verda don't get along too well. It's because of fire. Well, you get it. Sometimes Simka can be way too strict with me. You can't do this. You shouldn't do that. But if an exciting adventure comes along, she's always right there with us. Simka's brave. She's got the skills. Yeah, she's always ready to take on a challenge. I've got an awesome sister. But just keep that between us. Because if you tell her, it might go to her head. How long am I supposed to sit here? Hey, anyone? Hey! Help me! Saka, you give that back. Leave, leave this room. Are you okay? I can't leave you alone for a minute. Yeah, I think we're okay. Nola got here and saved me from Chusaka for real. Just like a real live knight. Oh, come on, good knight. I'm not kidding. You deserve to be one. 
and to protect every living creature from pesky Chusakas everywhere. I promise. Oh, valiant Fixie, I now pronounce you to be a knight. Sir no. Hooray! 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 Kitty! The television. Now watch carefully. First I put some of the yellow, then I add some of the blue, mix them together, and now we've got the color green. Isn't that great? Class! And it's not just paint either. Your television works by mixing colors too. Really? No way. That's embarrassing. No, like you should know that by now. We live inside of that television together with Papas and Masia. Come on! The picture on a TV screen is made up of tiny glowing dots that are either red, green, or blue. When blue and green dots are glowing together, we see the color light blue, like in a clear blue sky. When green and red mix, we see a yellow sun. And when all three colors shine brightly together, then we see white on the screen. It may be hard to believe, but it's true. All of the colors on the screen are made up of only three colors. Red, green, and blue. So everything that's on the TV screen all comes from three colors. Red, green, and blue. Isn't that great? Where do you learn all this stuff, huh? Actually, don't you think it's about time we got you a new TV? What do you say? Sure. <sighs> Great. And then I'll take this one with me to work. We just started shooting a new show about old things. Hooray! I'm going to get an awesome new TV. Simka Nolik. Did you hear that? Are you here? They must have gone home for something. <gasps> Wait a sec. Their home is... Their, their home is in the television. This was such a nice home for us. It's okay. We'll move into one of the other TVs here. The one in the living room? Why not? It's a nice new one with a huge flat screen. We're gonna have to leave the sofa behind. What? There's just not enough room in that TV. Then I'm not going to move there. Then where? Into the fridge? No, thank you. My nose is running. How about the stove? And what about us? You're the one that says that a stove is off limits for kids. Maybe the microwave will do. No, it's dangerous there. Then, in the piano. What piano? There's no piano in Tom Thomas's apartment. What a shame. A piano is the best place of all to call home. Huh. It looks like he already put us into a box. We're trapped. Good. Dad! Hey, Dad! I changed my mind. I really don't want to get a new TV. Hmm. Why don't you want a new one? I'm just used to this one. You're a junk collector. <laughs> uh-huh. Just like you, Dad. People have always dreamt of seeing things that are far, far away. All of us have heard fairy tales about crystal balls and magic mirrors. But the magic of television began only a hundred years ago. The screens on the first TVs were so small that people had to attach magnifying glasses to them to make the picture big enough for watching. Ever since those first TVs, both the outside and the inside of this amazing device continue to change. Bulky picture tubes have been replaced by electronic chips. Screens have grown wider and wider as TV sets have changed from big heavy boxes to flat light screens that can hang on the wall like a picture. And someday, real soon, it's quite possible that TVs will be made to roll up like a rug and people will be able to carry them anywhere. All right, I'll put it back, but under one condition. If it breaks, we'll buy you a new one right away. Yeah, sure. We'll never let it break, right? Never, never ever! Well, that's that. The color is completely wrong, see? I guess we're going to have to throw it out after all. Wait, wait, wait. I know how to make it work perfectly. Watch this. One, 
Like I told you, red with green and blue. Teesh! <laughs> the copy. Elisa! Don't worry, I found it. Uh, no, I didn't find it. Elisa! Elisa! I hear you. I'm coming, Professor Eugenius. Have you seen this umbrella anywhere? Looks like the professor lost his umbrella again. <gasps> More than one? Look at all these flyers. No, like, they're all copies of one flyer. Elisa prints lots of them so she can hang them up all over town. A copier is a device for making multiple copies of a single picture or document. An image that needs to be copied is placed on a piece of glass under a lid. The photocopier shines a bright light on it so it can take a clear picture. Then the image is printed onto paper with the help of special ink and a rotating drum. This way, you can make identical copies over and over again from one original until the ink or the paper runs out. What happened, Professor Eugenius? Oh, oh I, uh, my briefcase, I can't find it anywhere. Oh, you're so absent-minded. First it was the umbrella, now it's the briefcase. Oh, is that for me? I don't do it on purpose. Well, we'll find your briefcase. I'll go design a new flyer for that, and I'll print those out, too. Ah, I just remembered. Remembered where you left your briefcase? Not that. This morning, I forgot to drink my tea. <laughs> so we need to find your tea as well. It's so dark inside of here. Quiet! Elisa's coming up. We have to hide. <laughs> Where is that one about the briefcase? Here's the flyer for missing keys, the one for the phone, the flyer for when the professor gets lost. Here, a missing briefcase. Excellent. Looks like she's gone for now. And where is Nolik? There's Nolik in printed form. He got stuck inside the copier. We have to go and save him. Save him? We all need to be saved, Tula. If Elisa takes these flyers and hangs them up, the whole city will find out about Fixies. So what do we do then? Wait. Uh, oh, we can use those liquid erasers to paint over Nola. Simka, look! Here's another Nolik! Oh, here comes another one. <laughs> Make sure he's covered. And here. <laughs> Not everybody has the opportunity to enjoy seeing the paintings of the great masters. But thanks to copying technology, these pictures are well known all over the world. Young artists and sculptors can learn their craft by studying and copying the great artwork of the past. It's good to have copies of important documents, just in case. What if the original of a document happens to get destroyed? At least, there will be a copy. Copies are generally very helpful, but not all copies are good. Some copies called forgeries are bad. A forgery is a copy of a picture, document, or even money that is presented as the original. Making forged copies is illegal. You can even be sent to jail for making copies like that. I'm a little bit here. so bright in there. I almost went blind. And we had to take every one of those copies and paint over all of them. So that humans won't find out about Fixies. It's a shame I wasn't there. I could have helped you out with that. Professor! I'm leaving! <sighs> there. 
there they are. <laughs> Elisa! 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 She just left to hang up the flyers. Yeah, and I found the briefcase in the umbrella myself. I have to call her and tell her. Uh, 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 where's my phone? Have I really lost it? Don't you worry, Professor. If you can't find it, Elisa's got a flyer for your phone already. <laughs> What's important right now is that Elisa doesn't go missing. <laughs> Chocolate. Tom Thomas, unwrap it already. In the morning, Nolik. I really want to see the toy that's inside. Be patient, Nolik. That's all. I'm going to bed. Please don't touch it, okay? And you won't open it without me, right? That's a deal. Oh, good night, Nolik. Uh-huh. And what are you doing in here? Me? Well, I was... Oh, it's a chocolate ball with a toy inside. <gasps> How interesting. Yeah, totally. Let's unwrap it and take a look. We can't. Not until Tom Thomas comes in the morning. But if we're real careful, he won't notice. A chocolate confection. Piece of perfection. Uh, uh, Perhaps I'll uh, give that shining uh, bright. Uh, I am an affection for that chocolate confection. All that I want is to take a bite. A bite. A bite. Well, yeah. We sure took a look. Tom Thomas won't be happy at all when he finds out you touched his chocolate ball. And you? Like you didn't touch it? I didn't. Oh, then what's that, Nolik? <gasps> chocolate? Absolutely. It's 100% natural milk chocolate. It says so right here. The key ingredient in chocolate is cocoa beans. They are roasted, crushed, and ground. After that, the ground beans are pressed to extract the oil from them. If you mix butter, cocoa, and sugar, you'll get dark chocolate. And if you add some milk to it, then you'll get milk chocolate. Then you just warm it up, pour it into molds, and cool it down. You can add raisins or nuts into chocolate. Sometimes chocolate is even made with flavors like flowers or salt. Chocolate wasn't originally for eating. It was used in a drink made by mixing roasted beans with water and then adding hot peppers. Not every adult could drink it, let alone a child. Today, chocolate is a favorite treat the world over, for children and adults alike. How can we put it back together? How about scotch tape? Come on! We'll start by warming up the chocolate so it softens up, and then use that to make a new ball. And then to make it hard again... Yeah, we just cool it off. My chocolate confection has got an imperfection. Half of it's gone into thin air. But this is expected when chocolate goes unprotected. First you have got it, then it's not there. Not there. Not there. Tiddish! Done. Let's put in the toy. But we haven't even looked at it yet. Oh, it's so pretty. Tom Thomas is gonna love it. Oh, wait! Oh, what do you think of this idea? I've got a new confection of chocolate perfection. Safe in his rubber shot. But I can't take off the wrapper without Nolik. You really can't do it without him? I can't. I told Nolik I wouldn't. Mmm, your chocolate is gonna be delicious. Go on, you can eat a little. Hmm, if you say so, I'll eat the chocolate. But we won't open the toy without Nolik. Mmm, good chocolate. Come on, don't you want to know what the toy is? We won't tell. All right, 
just a peek, and we'll close it right up. What is this for? Teesh! Nolik? Really? How did you get in there? Surprise! Hmm. You were in the container, the container was in the chocolate ball, and the yep. ball... That's just impossible. Ah, he went and got you two to help. We helped a little. Hang on, Nolik. You promised not to touch the chocolate till morning. And you promised not to open the toy without me, right? Oh, my <laughs> The movie. He fakes left. He shoots. <gasps> Class! And can you do it backwards? Yeah, sure. <gasps> no way! Oh, what a shot! Huh. I wish Simka could see this. Why don't we make a movie for Simka about fire? We can use my fixie tub. It's got a camera. How come it's only for Simka? We'll make it for all of us. That's a great idea. I'll shoot the ball at the basket, and Nolik will do the filming. And what do we do? You can be whatever you want, like cheerleaders or the coaches. Yeah, a cheerleader. Help me in. Motion pictures, or movies, appeared more than 100 years ago after the invention of celluloid film. A movie is made up of a series of still photographs called frames. When you look at the frames quickly, one after another, the picture on the screen appears to move. It's hard to believe, but the first viewers got very scared when they saw a moving train on the screen. <laughs> At first, films were silent. Only later did people learn to make them with sound. And soon after that, people learned to make movies in full beautiful color. Movies aren't shot on film anymore. They're made with digital cameras. Today, almost all phones and tablets come with digital cameras inside of them. This makes it easy for just about anybody to make their own movie and share it with their friends. Fire is the best. Ooh, he can shoot the best. Hey, I haven't turned the camera on yet. Get ready. Here we go. Yep. Fire is the best. Show me. Yep. Fire is the best. And where's the ball? It flew over there. That's not right. You have to see the ball flying in the picture. I got it. Get ready. Uh. Fire is the best. How was that? It worked. I got it. Fire is the best. And where am I? You're somewhere over there. And we aren't there. Why did you have us cheering? Nolik, you need to make sure we're all in the shot. Okay, I'll try. the shots and you do the filming. Fire can't even hit the basket. You try to hit the basket when everybody's bothering you. Oh, so it's our fault, hmm? Why don't you learn how to play? Are you fighting again? <laughs> We're shooting a film. Whoa! Can I see it? There's nothing for you to see. All I have is pieces. And not one is right. Don't worry. It's no problem. All it needs is editing. What does it need? <laughs> Movies are not usually shot all at once, just a piece at a time. And each of these pieces can be shot several times with the camera in different places. Then there's plenty to choose from. After you're done shooting, you can take all of the best shots and put them one after another to make your movie. This process is called editing. Editing allows us to make movies that show things that could be impossible to shoot all at once. Well, let's see. For this first shot, we've got this take over here. For the ball going in, we've got this one. And I like this one of me shooting. And don't forget to put in me and Tula. Of course not. So here's what we've got. Fire is the best. Oh, the 
film is super. Can I try to edit it? Yeah, go ahead. Now we have something to show to our teacher. And Digit, too. <laughs> and Papus and Masia. Look, I did my own editing in the movie. That's not true. It is so. With editing, it's just not fair, Nolik. Fire was able to put it in a hundred times without any editing. You sure didn't. Hey, guys, don't fight. Do you want me to teach you all the right way to shoot hoops? Yeah! All right, here we go. And shoot! Fire is the best. Oh, we can shoot the best. The umbrella. Well, so why isn't it working? We'll figure it out, colleague. Let's start by disconnecting the hoist. Otherwise, you know... <laughs> ah, Tula, you're finally here. Where have you been? Looking for an umbrella. What? What do you need an umbrella for? Because it'll be pouring rain today. Where'd you get that idea? I heard it. You're leaving already? Yeah, I have to wash the car before I go in. Ah, then I'll take an umbrella to work. Hmm? <laughs> you know the omen, dear. Once you wash your car... It'll rain? <laughs> <gasps> oh! Todd Thomas's mother was just joking. You don't joke with omens. It's going to be raining for sure. But it's no big deal if you've got an umbrella. <laughs> Umbrellas are an ancient invention. They're almost 3,000 years old. In China and Egypt, umbrellas were made out of leaves, feathers, and paper. Servants carried them over their kings to protect them from the hot sun. When umbrellas became fashionable in Europe, people started using them as cover from rain. The most convenient are folding umbrellas. Their design is simple. The edge of the fabric is attached to ribs. When you open an umbrella, the ribs spread out in all directions and stretch the fabric over your head. Automatic umbrellas can open very quickly. Just press the button and it pops right open, keeping your clothes dry as if there was no rain at all. An unopened umbrella can be used as a cane. And if the umbrella's handle is also collapsible, then it can be stored in a bag when it isn't needed. Well, hmm, the contacts are normal. And all of the wires are in place. Then what's the problem? I don't know. We're gonna have to test it. Tula, put away your umbrella. But the omen calls for rain. Ah, one omen doesn't count. Manipulator, get me a screwdriver. Understood. Executing. Oh, the manipulator's joints are creaking. See? That's an omen of rain, too. <laughs> it's an omen that it's time for a little oil. Wanna help me? Just a sec. I'll help you. Well, so much for that omen. It's going to rain anyhow, I know it. Just take a look at those flowers drooping. Isn't that an omen? The reason that they're drooping is because Elisa is on vacation. And my colleague forgot to water that plant. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll finish the repair and I'll water them, I promise. Ah! This is the reason that it broke. This damaged part has to be replaced. Come on and help me. I'll get a replacement from the warehouse. Fire's flying low, isn't he? <laughs> and what? When birds start flying really low to the ground. <laughs> Fire isn't a bird. But he's flying low, didn't you see? Tula, give me a sledgehammer, would you? And put away the umbrella already. Look, there isn't a cloud in the sky. That's because it's morning. You have to know this, Owen. When there's no clouds in the morning, then in the afternoon, it's sure to... We're standing inside with a roof over our head. It can't break. Look, it's raining. You see? I told you so, and you didn't believe me.
At least I won't need to water the plants. You're right about that. Let's walk together. But how's the weather? Outside is sunny. A perfect day. But there's a superstition that comes to its fruition. With no umbrella, there ain't no start to break. With my umbrella, my sweet umbrella. Why can't we? Tom Thomas isn't your friend, all right? He only invited me. If you want to take a ride on a bicycle, then go find your own human friend to invite you. Well, Tom Thomas, you ready to go? We can't. There's no way we can ride this. The tire's got a hole. I try to fill it, but the air comes out. Well, then what should we do? I thought you'd know what. You're the fixie here. We, I mean, I didn't study it yet. Hang on! Tula, did you? Wait a sec. We found a hole in one of the tires of the bicycle. Hmm. You mean the one that only gives rides to friends? Don't be like that. Please help me out. I thought Tom Thomas was only a friend of yours. Uh, why don't you go and ask him yourself? He could be your friend, too. For thousands of years, wheels have been helping people all over the world. The wheel's ancestor is a lock. People would put logs under heavy loads to move them. Then people came up with the idea of slicing the log and connecting the slices with an axle. And there it was, the wheel. Wheels made life more convenient. Later came wheels with spokes, metal rims, and rubber tires. Soon people were wheeling around the world in and on all sorts of vehicles. Potters, mills, clocks. There are just so many different uses for a wheel. And with the steam train, steamboat, and cars, wheels spread all over the world. They even reach the planet Mars. The wheel really is one of the simplest and yet most amazing of all human inventions. Whew, it's off. So what's next? Now you take out the inner tube. You mean this rubber thing? Yeah, that's your inner tube. There's a hole there somewhere. Pump it up, Tom Thomas. Then we can see where the air is coming out. <laughs> That's not a good way to find the hole, Nolik. Why isn't it good? Because the hole might be really tiny. Then how do you find it? To find it, we need water. How come? Yeah, how come? Now I get why we need water. There! See those tiny bubbles? Yeah, do you see them? That's the air from inside of the tube. That means the hole is right there. Nolik, you're a genius. Hooray! Here's the hole I found. Look! Will you let me put on the glue? In my pack mat I have just the right kind for this. The hole is right here, right where I found it. But first, we have to make sure that the rubber is dry. Looks like it's dry. Then let's put the glue on. It's all fixed. Finish! All right, it's ready to go. Hooray! Digit Tula, you coming with us? I don't know. We weren't invited. I'm sure he'll invite you. Right, Tom Thomas? Of course I will. We're friends, aren't we?
Thomas. You brought your ball to lunch? It's filthy dirty. Don't you know how many germs are on it? Wash yourself up. Look, they're clean. Here, it's for you. I saw that. Now go back and wash your hands. Why? There are germs on Tusaka? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, give it back. Again? Hi, Tom Thomas. Uh -huh. Why are you so angry? You go wash your hands five times solid. This is germs, that is germs. Maybe they don't even exist. Of course they do. It's just that they're so tiny, you can't see them without a microscope. Tom Thomas, let's go into your dad's office. He's got a microscope. We can take a look at some germs. Germs, or microbes, are such tiny creatures we need a microscope to see them. But they live everywhere. In the earth, the water, throughout the air, they're on everything, even on us. Some microbes are able to move around with the help of filaments or tails. Lots of microbes are harmless, but there are some dangerous ones too. If they get inside of you through your nose or your mouth, you could end up with a sore throat or a stomach ache. Turn it a little more. Stop, now take a look. <gasps> it's horrible. Hey, let me take a look. Wow, they're so scary. Hang on, do I really have germs like that living on my hands too? You got it. But I washed them, uh, seven times. With soap? No, just water. You have to use soap to get rid of germs, not just water. So which soap should I use? Either, this one, that one, they are both antibacterial, so they kill bacteria. And what about germs, will it kill them? Of course. Bacteria is just another name for germs. They're the same thing. Wash. Tom Thomas, give me a drop of that liquid soap. I want my hands to be real clean. Good job. That's the spirit. Hooray! We're clean! Let's go put that puzzle together. All right, but doesn't it have germs all over it? And they're on the soccer ball. What are we going to do? I think we should clean them with soap. No, clean the whole room. You're right. surrounded by millions of invisible microbes, including those that can cause an illness. But there is no need to be afraid of them if you follow these simple rules. Eat only washed fruits and veggies, keep your home clean, and wash your hands very well with soap, preferably an antibacterial one, and every day. Antibacterial soap protects you for a few hours after it's been washed off. It not only cleans your hands, but also stops germs from reproducing. There are useful microbes, too. Some bacteria can be added to milk to make yogurt and cottage cheese. Others are used for purifying water. Even inside of humans are a lot of useful bacteria that help their bodies digest food. <gasps> Nolik, what do you think? Are there microbes living on the soap? I don't know. We should wash that, too, just in case. Hey, what are you two doing in here? Washing the soap. With soap? So there won't be any germs on it. You've got to be joking. Listen, getting rid of all the microbes is impossible and unnecessary. You just need to protect yourself from the bad ones. Ah, uh, bacteria gone. Tom Thomas, I need a minute so I can... <gasps> Mop your room. But I already washed it. What a good boy. The table's sparkling. <gasps> Just look how clean it is in here. Great job. What's going on? Nothing. You're not getting sick, are you? No. Tom Thomas, you did a great job in here, only you're taking this cleaning way too far. Understand? I've got gotcha. you. 
And do you get it? Me? Get what? That the most important thing is to make sure you wash your hands with soap. Okay. To the germ fighters! <laughs> Making the world safer, one less germ at a time. The spray can. Uh-huh. Footprints. Just like I suspected. Are those your footprints? Not, Not ours. ours. Then what's on your shoes? What a mess I got into. Pew! <laughs> it's bug spray! <laughs> Elisa! <clears throat> what a terrible smell! What is it? It's poison. <clears throat> Why do we need poison? I've had this gnawing suspicion for quite a long time that something is living in our laboratory. And so, yesterday, after it got dark, I quietly dusted the table with flour. And so... Look, don't you see? Footprints. And I want to destroy <gasps> them. Destroy who? You really haven't figured it out? Cockroaches live here. A cockroach? That's what she <laughs> thinks you are. Eh, uh, uh, what makes you sure that it's a cockroach? What else could it be? Well, uh, maybe a spider. Hmm. Well, spiders are cute. And nice, too. But then where is the spider where? Uh, uh, I don't know. Exactly. It's cockroaches. That stuff is gross. Where's that stuff coming from? It's from an aerosol spray can, Nolik. <laughs> Aerosol is made of tiny little drops and particles that can hang in the air for quite a long time. Dust, smoke, and fog, they are all aerosols. People learned to make aerosols long ago. For instance, they took a liquid that repels mosquitoes, poured it into a can, and injected some gas into it. Then, when you push the button, the gas forces the liquid to go out through a tiny hole, turning it into a bug spray. That spray will poison the Fixies. We have got to stop Elisa. Let's destroy the aerosol can. No way. We just can't do that. And what if we switch it with a can of whipped cream? Joking. We've got to get Elisa to believe that it's a spider and not cockroaches. She thinks spiders are cute. You're right. Let's go get Buggy. Spray cans have all sorts of different uses. For example, they're very convenient for getting medicine into a sore throat. They can be used to fill the air with the sweet smell of perfume or to cover unpleasant smells with deodorant. Spraying paint from a can is also very useful. It applies the paint very evenly. Some spray cans are even used for food. But there can also be deadly poisons inside of spray cans, like bug killer. So make sure you know which one you're using. And you must always remember how to handle spray cans properly so that nobody gets hurt. You must never open, take apart, or pierce a spray can. And spray cans should never be heated or put next to an open fire because they contain gas that can explode. Right? Would you help us? Please? <gasps> there are new tracks here. Well, roaches, prepare to die. Are you ready? Go ahead. Run! <gasps> oh, don't kill Buggy. No! <gasps> you are so cute! What a sweet little spider. Can I be your friend? That worked great. I hope that's the end of her spraying that poison. 
my little spider, I almost poisoned you. Spider, where are you going? Aren't we friends? Yeah, that's a good idea. You're better off being our friend. Buggy, wait! She's upset. She could have been poisoned and we didn't tell her. I'm sure she'll forgive us if we go and apologize. The parrot. Adisa, do you want a cracker? Wow, Tom Thomas, who is that? Simka Nolik, this is Adisa. My dad brought him from Africa. <laughs> I can't believe it, you've got a real parrot. Can he talk? My dad said that he can, but I haven't heard him yet. Well, let's see if he can. Okay, say, Adisa's a good bird. No, he should learn my name. That would be awesome. Adisa, say, Nolik, that's my name. He doesn't want to talk about you, Nolik. Hmm, maybe he doesn't know how to speak human language. Check it out! It looks like he knows how to speak dog. No, Nolik. He doesn't know any languages at all. Then how can he talk? Parrots can repeat many of the different sounds that they hear. For instance, a dog's bark or the ring of the phone. Parrots can also mimic words or even whole sentences of human speech. But parrots don't understand the meaning of the words they are saying. They just repeat them like a music player. Hey, hello. Hey, hello. That's why you won't be able to have a real conversation with a parrot, even if it's the kind of parrot that can talk. All right, then let's have him repeat something. Hey, Adisa, Tadish, it's the Fixie's special sign. Say it, Fixie's had a special sign, Tadish. <gasps> My dad is back. Let's hide, quickly. Hi there. Well, how's it going? You two talking to each other yet? I can't get him to say anything at all. You can't? Hmm. Adisa, how are you? Adisa's a good parrot. <gasps> he wouldn't say anything before. Eh, he's used to talking around me. Adisa's a good parrot. Nolik, that's my name. <laughs> hmm? Whose name is Nolik? Uh, no, he was saying he's got no luck in this game. What kind of game? Let's hide, quickly, <gasps> hide. Uh, we were playing hide and seek. <laughs> With the parrot? Uh-huh. <sighs> Fixies have a special sign. <gasps> Fixies have a special sign. <laughs> what? Fixies? A special sign? Uh, no. It was physics. It's a special science. Uh, that's what we're studying about right now at school. You know, how special oh. physics is. Wow, that's impressive. Um, well, keep up the good work, son. Whew. The ability to repeat what humans say is not something unique to only parrots. Crows, starlings, and other animals can do it too. And besides animals, there are also machines that can repeat human speech. For instance, when you call somewhere and hear, leave your message after the tone, what you're hearing is a voicemail machine using a recorded voice to answer the call. Another example is the voice on trains and buses that is used to announce the stops. Those voices are usually recordings that are repeated over and over. Today, there are also artificial voices on computers, tablets, and smartphones that can read text and say it out loud. But even if a machine knows what you are saying, it can't know why you are saying it. Only people can figure that out. And Fixies, of course. Huh? Tom Thomas, you're a hero. You really wiggled your way out of that one. And Adisha, bad parrot. He almost gave up our secret. Be careful with that parrot. I get it. 
Adisa, listen, you. Forget everything we said. And don't ever say no work, okay? Yeah, nothing about the Fixies at all. Yeah, so if you meet a Fixie, please don't let their secret out. Got it? Ah, oh, he's nodding. Looks like he understands. Let's get out of here so he'll forget about us as soon as possible. So if you meet a fixie, please, don't let their secret out. Tadish, tadish, tadish. Vitamins. Seven times five is 35. Seven times six, um, uh, wait a sec. Uh, it's, uh... Tom Thomas, are you ready? For what? For our walk. Did you forget? Oh, yeah. I'm having such problems with my memory. I keep trying to memorize this table, but I can't. <laughs> if you want to improve your memory, you need vitamins. Vitamins? Well, how's it going, Tom Thomas? Not well. My memory's just terrible. Studying's getting me nowhere. Hey, don't be discouraged. We'll make your memory better with some vitamins. Oh, now you about vitamins. Uh, and who else? Just a school friend. Well, all right. Vitamins are very important for people's health, even though you don't need much of them. For instance, vitamin A is necessary for good eyesight and normal growth. Vitamin C helps keep you from getting sick. Vitamin D makes your teeth and bones stronger. Usually, people get the vitamins they require from a diet of fruits, dairy, vegetables, and other healthy foods. But if someone still isn't getting the vitamins their body needs, then doctors recommend taking special vitamin pills. All right, take out some vegetables and some fruit. And some berries. They have a lot of vitamins, too. Forget about it. We're strengthening your memory with vitamins. And you'll study the multiplication table at the same time. All right, then. There are three cherries in each pile. Tom Thomas eats five piles. Go on, eat, eat. So, here's the question. How many cherries did Tom Thomas eat all together? I don't know. What'd you say? I said I don't know. Try counting those pits, then. Huh. Fifteen. That's right. And that means that three times five equals fifteen. Now, try my problem. Tom Thomas ate three pairs of apples. That's easy. The answer's six. I just couldn't find more apples for that one. Tom Thomas quit slacking off. To get this problem right, you have to eat the apples. They have We don't have enough carrots for me to learn how to multiply by nine. All right, then. I'll help you. To multiply two by three, all you need to do is just add three twos together. It's much harder to multiply a number by nine. That takes too much time to add. That's why at schools they want you to memorize the table. But there's a simple way to multiply by nine without the table or a calculator. Let's say you need to multiply the number three by nine. Put your hands face up in front of you. Now, find the third finger from the left and bend it down. So what do we see? There are two fingers to the left of the bent finger and seven fingers to the right. Two and seven means that the answer is 27. You got it? Great! Let's do another problem. What is seven times nine? Here are six fingers and here are three. That's right! The answer is 63. Thomas, did you eat all of that? 
But you're the one that told me you need to eat vitamins. That's why I got these vitamins for you. That little? What do you mean, little? There's enough in this bottle for a month. Go ahead, try one. They're very good for you. They taste good, too. <laughs> right. Better than an onion. <laughs> or a radish. <laughs> Can I have another one? No, that's enough. You shouldn't take more than one vitamin every day. I remember where I saw this. I saw the same kind of bottle with a green lid over at Katya's. Speaking of memory, let's check your multiplication table. Let's say that you and Katya are each taking one vitamin a day. So, how many have you eaten after nine days? The answer is 18. <laughs> well done. It's getting better. Vitamins really work. The iron. All done. <laughs> Thanks for your help. Professor Eugenia! Mm, mm. Yes, Elisa. The award ceremony's in an hour. You need to leave soon. I remember, Elisa. What are you getting an award for? It's the... <laughs> it's the genius of the year. Not too modest, but fair. <laughs> and well-deserved. Wow. And they're giving it to you? Well, yeah. Will they show it on TV? <laughs> Why, of course. Class. And during your speech, can you say hi to me? And me, and me. And Zipka. Right. Say something like this. I'd like to send a big shout out to all my Fixie friends. Oh, that's a great idea. That way everyone can know about Fixies. Professor Eugenius, didn't I see an iron in here earlier? Hmm? Huh? Oh! Oh, come on, Elisa. There's no need for that. I'm not going to argue with you. You have to look just perfect. Otherwise, everybody is going to think that I don't take care of you. First, we'll let the iron warm up, and then I can iron your suit. The most essential part of an electric iron is called the heating coil. It's hidden inside the iron sole plate. When the iron is plugged into an electrical outlet, the coil gets hot and heats up the sole. People use a hot iron to remove the wrinkles from their clothing. Irons also have a water container. When the water gets hot, it turns into steam. The steam comes out through the holes in the iron sole, making it even easier to remove wrinkles. Wow, wow, that sure is hot. All that's left to do is pour some water into it. Professor, this is water, right? Yeah, yeah, it's water. That isn't water. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. It's not water, it's not water. Then what is it? Well, it's, uh, juice. Juice? Yeah, juice. Oh, no. The poor iron won't last. Phew. And it smells like crud. I broke the iron. It's awful. No, 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 <gasps> Elisa. Don't be so upset. Don't be so upset. It's the genius of the year ceremony. And you'll be in a wrinkled suit in front of the whole country. Oh, I won't survive. <laughs> <laughs> Elisa, hang in there. Be careful. Elisa. <laughs> Oh, Elisa. Professor Eugenius, are you all right? Oh, couldn't be any better. We're going to go fix that iron for you. And while we're doing that, you go fix Elisa. That would be great. <gasps> Look over there. I'll fix the contact. You and Nola can scrape that burnt juice off the iron. Mm-hmm. Elisa, Elisa, please wake up. Uh... We did it. Your iron is fixed. Elisa, you should see the iron. It's working. What? And I'm just lying around here? I have to hurry. Where's the iron and your suit? Wrinkled clothing is not very beautiful. And that's why, since ancient times, people have been trying to find different ways to get rid of wrinkles. For example, long ago, people would put their wrinkled clothing under a heavy, flat rock. In ancient Rome, people used to beat their crinkled garments with a metal hammer. And in China, fabric was ironed with hot frying pans. 
irons with a shape like what is used today appeared during the Middle Ages. They were made out of cast iron and needed to be heated up on a stove before they could be used. Later, people came up with irons that were heated by putting hot coals inside. And finally, in the 19th century, a convenient electrical iron was invented and has been used ever since. And the prize for Genius of the Year goes to... Professor Eugenius! Bravo! Bravo, Professor! I thank you. I give my sincerest thanks to you. And may I take this opportunity to send my greetings to Fix? Uh, uh, uh to all the Fix assists. Just give me the prize. Oh, that was quick thinking. Brilliant. He is just astounding. Perfection from head to toe. <gasps> Well, practically perfect. <laughs> the exercise machine. Nolik? I'm not here. You haven't seen me today at all. What's up with you? There's going to be this race, and it starts really soon. It's the boys against the girls, their team against ours. And what? And what? I'm the smallest one on the team. And I'll let everyone down. That's why I'm hiding. I don't want my team to lose. You can't just give up. You can learn to run faster if you want. You think? Of course. That's what exercisers are for. You need a treadmill to get stronger. Class! And where can we get one? We'll make it ourselves. Exercise machines were invented so people could work out without going outside. For instance, a treadmill lets you walk or run for a very long time while moving in one place. A treadmill's main part is a conveyor belt that is driven around by an electric motor. Today's smart treadmills have the ability to measure your speed, the distance that you've run, your heart rate, and even the results of previous workouts. There, it's all done. Teesh! It's time to start your first training session. How will I learn to run really fast? If you keep turning it so slowly. Uh, uh, uh. Hey, that's a little too fast. Oh, sorry about that. I got it. That's what you call training. Tom Thomas, so, what do you think? Maybe I trained enough? Not yet. You need to keep going. Oh, I can't do this any longer. Let's stop. Whew. No way. Turn the handle. Yeah. There are all sorts of exercise machines to help you improve your health. This one simulates skiing. It exercises your arms, legs, and heart. And this one, you can row like a robo. And if pedaling's your thing, an exercise bike lets you get a great workout, no matter how bad the weather is outside. There are also weight training machines. These machines can help you build big, strong muscles and tone the shape of your body. However, you can still get great exercise without these bulky machines. There are plenty of much simpler devices that you can find room for in any house. Like a chin-up bar for doing pull-ups, a wall-mounted ladder or rope for climbing, or jump ropes, weights, hula hoops, or balls. The important thing is to just exercise. <laughs> okay, girls, <laughs> hold on to your hats. Oh, how scary. We'll show them who's going to win. Right, Tula? I'm going to do my best. Tula will definitely beat Nolik. We got to step it up. It's time to get this race going. Runners, are you ready? I'm ready. ready. On your marks, everyone get set. Go! Go! Did you lose to Simka? Oh, 
Because her velocity is greater. Oh, now the girls are gonna win. Nola will never catch up with Tula. Oh my gosh! Nola he appears to be gaining ground. God, look at him! He's looking for the head! Go on, Nola, go! You've got it, buddy! Come on, buddy! They look at him, he's flying! All of that work on the exercise machine really helped! Like, where are you going? The finish is there! Just not fair. It was a tie. And a very noble one. All right, you just wait for the next race. Nolik's gonna win it big time. Now it's time for you all to get up on that winner stand. <coughs> oh no, all the first places are taken. For you? We'll find one. Beauty. Show off, Derda. And one. Ha! Check that out. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> it's a shame Fire didn't see that. I'm just uh, training for school. You're the one that's doing all these twists and turns for Fire. Hmm, me? It never even crossed my mind. No, like slow down. <sighs> Tula, why don't we go and play some chess? Don't you think that figure skating's beautiful? Turn me! Uh. How cool! <laughs> why did you yell like that? I just got a pair of tickets to see the one and only Vector. <gasps> Splendid! And who's going with you? Actually, I don't know. I haven't thought about it yet. What's there to think about? Just invite the most beautiful girl in our school, right? Yeah, not a bad idea, my friend. Did you hear that? The most beautiful one will get invited. Well, I'm not even interested. And you know what? Neither am I. Our world is full of beauty. There seems to be no end to the beautiful plants and animals and the gorgeous mountains, forests, and lakes. But even that's not enough for people. They create their own handmade beauty, too. Artists paint beautiful pictures. Composers write beautiful music. Architects create beautiful buildings. And fashion designers make beautiful clothes. Not even scientists stay out of it. They create beautiful ideas. These ideas can be the basis for the creation of new technologies that make people's lives better. Everyone has their own idea of what's beautiful. There are as many opinions as there are people. But everyone tries in their own way to be beautiful. Both people and fixies. Please help me, Tula. How can I become beautiful? Huh. I don't know. Go and ask Verda. Look at her. She's got it. What has she got? What's the most beautiful thing about her? Oh, well, her hairpin, her hairstyle. The green looks great on her. Green looks great. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, see you later. Hmm? Tula. Huh? What's your opinion? Fire, do you think he likes Simka? Looks like he does. Is it because she's a redhead? Orange? Hmm, now I get it. Well, is that close to her color? Not really. It needs more green. <laughs> What makes a person really beautiful? Fancy clothing? Bright nail polish? Dyed hair? Those don't make you look your best. 
Here's a much more reliable recipe. First, wash off and comb your hair. See, you're looking more beautiful already. Now change those dirty and wrinkly clothes for clean ones. Huh? That's even more beautiful. And finally, if you eat less sweets and get plenty of exercise, then you'll surely become a handsome boy <laughs> or a gorgeous girl. Fire? What's up? Do you think you could get an autograph from Vector for me? You got it. I love his song so much. So do I. Especially that one that goes... Computer, 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 you are super. I play my computer and turn it up real loud. I play it all morning, all day, and through the nighttime. But no, 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 that's not allowed. <laughs> I had no idea you were such a fanatic. You know, I'm not going to get you his autograph. Why won't you? Because you'll get it yourself. You know what I got? An extra ticket. <gasps> I thought you were going to take the most beautiful girl. All of you are beautiful, and you're the most fun to be around. Let's go. Stop! Hang on! Oh, Simba? Or is it Verda? Where are you going? What do you mean, where? To the concert. <gasps> mm. <gasps> mm. Verda? No, Simka. Or vice versa. I'm so confused. Come on, Tula. Can't you recognize them? This one's Simka, that one's Verda. Let's go, or we'll be late. Hmm. Blondes are always the lucky ones. Yeah. I guess we should have made our hair blonde like Tula's. Musical notes. Yeah! No! Yeah! No! Yeah! No! Hey, what a thoughtful conversation you're having there. Been going on for a while? Yeah! No! Simka, please tell Moloch what this is. A present, right? Uh-huh. From Katya. And it's got a secret code right here, you see? <laughs> There's no secret on there. They're just notes. Musical notes. Ha! See? I told you. The squiggles could have been music. I don't believe you. Come on, two people said the very same thing. Simka is not a people. She's a fixie. Anyway, there are two of us. You're ganging up on me. We're not ganging up on you, Nolik. Music is something you can play or listen to with your ears. But that's not all. You can also write it down. When we want to write down words, we use letters. And if we want to write down music, we use special symbols called musical notes. There are seven notes. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, and ti. The higher the sound, the higher the note sits on a set of five horizontal lines called a musical staff. Notes that look like this last longer, and notes like this are short, quick notes. Thanks to sheet music, people can read music like reading a book and then sing or play it. Until I hear you play me what you say is there, I won't believe you. On what? You know that we don't have any instruments. Try using spoons to play it. You think you're being funny? Hey, stop arguing. I know how we can play this song. We can use water. Water? Heh. <laughs> Let me get this straight. Are you trying to play the music? Or are you trying to wash it? That's right. Pour it in there, Tom Thomas. Some more. Hear how the sound changes? Uh-huh. Now, start pouring water in this next glass until you hear the note called T. Stop! You got it! Now pour here? Yeah. We still have one note left. And what do I do if my mom comes home? What do I say I'm doing? That you're learning to play music while you're washing the dishes. That's it. That's the high dough. Now we have all the notes we need. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, and do. Class. Go on, Tom Thomas, play. How about we all play it together? Musical sounds can be produced in a variety of different ways. Violins and cellos are played with a bow. When the bow is rubbed against the string, the string vibrates like it's shivering. 
and that produces a beautiful sound. A guitar also has strings, but they make sound when they are plucked. And inside a piano are special hammers that hit the strings when the piano player presses down on the keys. Instruments like trumpets, trombones, flutes, and pipes make sound when air is blown through them. That's why they call them wind instruments. There are even instruments that make sound when they are rubbed by a wet finger. Try wetting your finger and carefully moving it around the rim of a wine glass. With a little bit of practice, you'll hear a lovely sound. Well, are you two ready? Yeah! Great! All together now! I know Happy this! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, Tom Thomas! Happy birthday to, to me! Tom Thomas, we also wish you a happy birthday. You see, Nolik, and you didn't believe that this was music. But I was the first to guess which song it is. Hey, thanks so much for helping me figure out Katya's present. And how about sending a song to Katya? Yeah! We can write down a musical note to a song about the Fixies. The Fixies? We can. We can't write down the words, but if it's just the notes there, then it's no problem. Hooray! <laughs> Want to play it? Of course we do. The program. All right. Let's check in. Say good morning. Good morning. Lift your arm for me. Lower your arm down. <laughs> it works. <laughs> Excellent. Hi, Professor Eugenius. Mm. Hello, Fixies. Nice to see you today. So what is it you're inventing today? I'm improving the manipulator. Now the device has sight, hearing, mm -hmm, and even a voice. Good morning. Oh, wow. If this thing had a brain, it would be just like a human. But it does have a brain. See how Professor Eugenius attached a computer to the mechanical arm? The computer's a brain, you mean? Well, not quite. The computer's just a piece of metal. Good morning. What makes a computer intelligent are the programs inside. Imagine that you came home from school and found a note from your mom. Change your clothes, eat lunch, clean the dishes, and do your homework. That's about what a computer program is like. It's a set of commands that a computer carries out in sequence, one after another. Programs are also called applications. There are a lot of them in computers, tablets, and phones. It's the computer programs that make these devices so smart. There we go. I have tweaked the program. Let's see. Now the manipulator, upon my command, uh, uh, is going to wash this dirty mug. Manipulator, a dirty mug. Now, eliminate the problem. Executing. The problem has been eliminated. <laughs> I don't think it understood what you said. <laughs> Let's try it again. Clean up the shards. Don't understand. Well, just sweep the floor. Don't understand. <sighs> How about rid the laboratory of any foreign objects? Understood. Executing. I see two foreign objects. Hey! What are you doing? Hey! Stop it right now! They're not foreign objects, they're my friends. That's better. Another foreign object. I'm not foreign. Another foreign I belong object. here. Foreign. I belong here. Foreign. I belong. Foreign. <laughs> Enough! Stop it! Down! What? Can't get us? You need a longer arm. Understood. Extending arm. Stop! No. Sit! Lie down! Down! Oh, over here. Doesn't seem 
seem to be working right. For sure. It must have some glitch. Ah! Modern devices often work under the command of different computer programs. And these programs can malfunction. For instance, a car alarm might go off for no apparent reason. Or a computer stops following your commands and starts doing strange things on its own. Or your phone freezes up and doesn't respond no matter how many times you poke at it. If this happens to one of your devices, it's recommended that you restart it. Or turn off your device and turn it back on again. Sometimes it helps and the device comes back to life. But if that doesn't help, you may need a repairman to figure out if it's a problem with the program or with the device itself so he can fix it. How are we going to stop this thing? Oh, we need to disconnect the manipulator from the computer. That's brilliant. I'll distract him and you pull the plug out. <laughs> Don't. That's my sensitive spot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you ready? <laughs> and one. Ow. Yeah. And two. Ah, I see what's wrong. What? The program has a little mistake. There we go. Now the manipulator won't act up. Let's check it. Hang on, no way. That's enough for today. We still have to clean up this mess. Don't worry. The manipulator can help us out. The toilet. <laughs> Water from the toilet. <laughs> I'm not drinking it. Then what? Washing up? In the toilet? Come on now. Then what are you staring at inside of there? Well, I think that the toilet's broken. The water just won't stop running. Yes, yeah, so? What do you mean, so? We gotta conserve water. Simka, you're the one that taught me that. You're right, Tom Thomas. It's important not to waste water. But the problem in this toilet isn't where you were looking. Then where? Here in the tank, not the bowl. <laughs> Almost all toilets have tanks that are used for storing water. This water is flushed into the bowl when needed. Water flows into the tank through a water valve that has a float attached to it. As the water level in the tank rises, so does the float. And when there's enough water in the tank, the float closes off the valve and the water stops. But if the float happens to break, the water will keep running through the overflow tube into the bowl. We'll be back soon. <laughs> Look at this. I can't believe how beautiful it is. Ha! I see what's wrong here. This float that we're standing on, it got disconnected for some reason. That's why the water keeps pouring out. I see. And it's going down that tube into the bowl. Well, what's the problem? It's the float. It got disconnected. Can you get it back on? Nope. Sorry. Without poppers, we can't fix it. We'll get Papus, and you, Tom Thomas, you'll guard the door. Yeah, or someone could come and flush the toilet while we're working in the tank. And we'll get flushed away. To where? Straight into the sewer. And then it's bye-bye, Tom Thomas, forever. The sewage system is a huge network of pipes that run underground. This is where the dirty water from sinks and the waste from toilets is sent. The sewage pipes then carry this dirty water to sewage treatment plants, where the water is cleaned before it is dumped into a river or the sea. Before the first sewage systems were invented, people would just dump their waste right out their windows onto the streets. Oh, the smell in the cities was just awful. Even the first sewage systems didn't put a stop to this terrible smell. This smelly problem wasn't solved until the invention of the modern toilet. At the bottom of the toilet is a bent pipe called the siphon that's filled with water that keeps the smell from getting back into the house. Don't ask me why, but no one goes through that door. It's a secret, Chusaka. Tom Thomas, ready to eat? Not now, Mom. Not even a cookie? Mm, 
<laughs> All right. Here's what I need you to do. You guard the door so no one flushes the toilet. And that goes for you, too. Oh, it's terrible how much water's getting wasted. It's a good thing you noticed it. It was Tom Thomas who spotted it. <laughs> well, let's get to work. I wasn't planning on it. I was getting ready to take a shower. All right, just don't touch the toilet. What's wrong with it? It's just broken. Really? Let me check it out. Huh. No! Don't flush it! Flush it! Dad, why? <laughs> why are you crying? We fixed it. You're here! I thought that you got flushed down into the sewer! We almost did, but Nolik saved us, both me and Papus. I'm Thomas. What was it that made you so sad? The toilet? Uh-huh. No need to be sad. The toilet's working just fine. Really? Yeah, I had to check it. <laughs> <laughs> now I need to go and check it too. The Sith. Dad, what time is Mom getting back from her conference? She'll be back in an hour. What surprise can we make for her? Let's bake her buns with raisins in them. They're her favorite. That's a great idea. Ah. Where do we keep our recipes? Huh, they're not here. Where could they be? What are you looking for? <gasps> a recipe. They're in the drawer by the stove, over there. Great, thanks a lot. Here they are. That's fantastic. Let's see, what do we need? Milk. Flour. Eggs. Some cinnamon and raisins. The cinnamon's right there. You're out of raisins. Uh, we're out of raisins. Can we make them without? No, Mom loves them with raisins. Ah, it's too late. The stores are closed. Cereal! We got cereal! And so? It has raisins, look! Tom Thomas, you're a genius! Why don't you be in charge of the raisins? Tom Thomas, what does Mom use to knead dough? The mixer. How about the mixer? Hmm, not a bad idea. I don't think you have enough raisins. But you haven't made the dough yet. It'll be really quick with the mixer. All right, Dad. We'll see who finishes first. Come on, faster, faster. Don't be so clumsy. If you think you're so good, then why don't you help? Fine, we'll help. <laughs> Catch! What's going on in there? We picked everything off the top. We have to dive down. Then dive. Hurry up. Dad's almost done putting the mixer together. Where are the raisins? It's dark down there. We can't see any raisins. Well, try diving again. No, this way won't work. We need a filter. In order to separate seeds from the husk, air from dust, and water from harmful particles, we use filters. The simplest kind of filter is a metal netting. These kinds of filters are installed in washing machines and dishwashers. They keep the water clean by capturing small debris and sand. As a result, machines work better and go longer without breaking. In other words, filters help separate what is wanted from what isn't. 
think I know what Mom uses. Perfect. That filters a sieve. Grab the bowl and hold the sieve over it. Pour in the cereal. Now shake it so the tiny flakes fall through the sieve and the raisins stay in it. Dad's turning the mixer on. Then you need to shake faster. <laughs> Dad, you're spraying the batter all over the kitchen. The mixer's too powerful. The mixer's fine. The batter's too liquid. You have to add flour. Add flour. Oh, right. How do you know all this? Shake it some more. No need. I shook all the flakes through it. Glass. It really worked. Dad! What? Ready to put in the raisins? Look at you! How did you get them all out so fast? By using our sieve, Dad! Do you know the story about Cinderella? Her evil stepmother wouldn't let her go to the ball. Instead, she poured peas into a sack of cinder and ordered Cinderella to pick them all out. But what most people don't know is that it was Fixies who helped her separate the peas from cinder with the help of a sieve. That's right! Cinderella was friends with the Fixies. You can find evidence of Fixies in a number of tales. Don't Tom Thumb or Thumbelina remind you of somebody? How did these tiny characters make their way into fairy tales? It's quite possible that long ago, a Fixie who wasn't paying attention was spotted by a storyteller. And that became the inspiration for countless tales. All right, you can open your eyes. Ta-da! Beautiful. Whose idea was this? Tom Thomas. Mmm, they're so good. What recipe is this? Tom Thomas found it. And you remembered that I love raisins. Tom Thomas sifted them out of the cereal. Well done, Tom Thomas. All by yourself? Shh. I should say so. Tish! <laughs> 